Okay guys, today we are going to be taking a look at the 3DK AMUC. And that's Three Dog Knives based out of Anchorage. And this is their AMUC. And the AMUC, I guess the easiest way to describe it is a survival knife built by Alaskans for Alaskans. And I think that that is the best way to kind of summarize it. This is really designed to be a multi-use knife that you can use uh, for a wide variety or a plethora of tasks. And it's designed kind of for Alaskans, especially in mind. But of course, you know, anyone that has a reasonably forested area it near them or that they adventure out into might actually find this blade pretty darn useful. Now, like I said, it is a pretty big blade because it is designed to be a survival knife. It also, this one in particular, is in LMAX. So I think that's also a really capable survival knife steel because not only is it going to be very tough it's going to be very wear resistant it's also going to be pretty darn corrosion resistant at least on the par of or it has the same corrosion resistance level as uh, cpm s35 vn which my very favorite uh, crk pacific has for its steel so overall it has a lot of uh redeeming or has a lot of qualities going for it but ultimately how does it perform so the first part i will say uh and kind of what i like about this lmax steel is that lmax is very tough it's a very uh, hard steel so it's going to be able to take a lot of abuse so the advantage to that in a way is that they were actually able to make the amuck very i don't want to say very thin but reasonably thin if i remember correctly it's around 5 30 seconds of an inch thick uh, and so for a survival knife um, oftentimes you usually see you know um, three sixteenths even a quarter inch thick you know real hefty stocks of steel but because of the use of lmax you can get equal toughness and equal wear resistance with much thinner steels uh, just because it's a higher performing alloy so it's really cool to see that uh they didn't just go with that big old slab of steel kind of mantra and at the same time too it is still also very tough you guys could see here and this is of course just spruce wood that we're testing on it's what the environment provides me you know being in alaska so it's not the toughest steel you know we're not pounding on hickory here but it is endlessly satisfying to just absolutely sail a blade through several knots you know back to back and it just cuts straight through the knot and keep on sailing through the wood so this knife absolutely did that you guys could probably see you know there's several instances where it just cut right through knots and that is always a good sign and knots are generally where if you have a soft steel or an improperly heat treated steel you will see it if it's too hard it might crack the blade if it's too soft it might bend it so of course luckily the good old amuck did not have any of those issues and it continued to sail through everything very nicely in addition to that too um, the recurved blade while not being my absolute favorite is pretty darn good it is a nice high flat grind or reasonably high flat grind for how wide this blade is and so it does curl wood very very well as far as doing basic tasks like batoning and feather sticking it holds up very nicely now like i said because it is a thinner steel even though this is a bigger kind of chunkier blade or at least wider blade um, it still is very capable at doing things like notching because you are dealing with a reasonably thin steel Steel. And I think one thing that kind of came to my mind when using the AMUC is that it reminds me a lot of the Topps Tom Brown Tracker, but the Topps Tom Brown Tracker is more of a tool that looks like a knife. And I would classify the AMUC as a tool that looks like a knife, but it definitely is leaning more on the side of knife than tool and so it has a lot of usability and like i said if you want uh, more detailed work it can do it can certainly produce that okay so it's tough it can do a good survival job but there are just a few things i would like to see on this blade the first one and the biggest one i would like to see is a front finger choil i think there is definitely room up here and while 
but front finger choil might not be everyone's favorite. I would really like that because part of me is already choking up on this knife and holding it here, especially when doing things like feather sticking to get that extra little bit of controllability when you're back at the very back of the spine or back of the edge, I should say. And so it would be really nice to have a firm, you know, kind of finger choil to choke up onto so that you could have that extra bit of controllability. And I think that would be very, very helpful for making this blade an even better survival knife. The only other thing I would really do, or the only other couple things I would do is probably recommend taking off this kind of stylized back. It does look nice and it doesn't really hinder the performance in any negligible way. I just think that eventually it will chew up whatever baton you use. Granted, my baton here is already very chewed up as you guys can see here. So I'm not really worried about it getting damaged any further. It's already pretty damaged. The only other thing I would recommend is because you are working with such a thin stock of steel, which once again isn't really that bad of a thing because it makes it easier to baton through stuff and uh, you know working with a little bit of a thinner stock of steel also makes it more slicey, but because there is a thinner stock of steel, the handle I would recommend being just a little bit thicker, especially kind of in this front area where they want your uh, pointer finger or index finger to go. It feels just a little bit thin to me and that's actually why I added some extra paracord. One, it does kind of look cool as well, but two, the more practical reason is to help just give more bulk to the handle because I think the handle feels just a little bit thin. But aside from those a few kind of cons, really this is a pretty squared away blade and it doesn't look, it might look a little bit outlandish, similar to the Topps Tom Brown Tracker, but you know, in practice and in play, you know, it's certainly a tough enough blade that it sails through things. It doesn't really have any issues or problems doing whatever job you need it to do. And I think that overall, um, it's definitely a different blade, but if you learn how to use it, it's very effective at doing a wide plethora of things. In addition, it also is very easy to choke up on the actual blade itself. So if you need to do any more if, if you need to do any kind of fine tooth carving or kind of draw, drawing back towards yourself, or especially if you're doing things like skinning in a game animal, like a larger game animal preferably, you can really hold the you know stock of the steel and get close up on that edge and use it or leverage it as you need. So that's another advantage. You can of course also use the entire length of it as a draw knife or a form of draw knife uh, when you pull the blade back on yourself like such. Uh, and one nice thing about the kind of partial recurve of the blade is that it does kind of draw everything towards the center point of the blade. So draw knifing with this knife should actually be pretty tenable and pretty reasonable. So those are a few kind of uh, so those are kind of a few closing thoughts that I have about this blade. Overall, it's a pretty fantastic and pretty cool Alaskan oriented survival knife for general purpose survival in the wilderness. It's certainly tanky and tough enough to take whatever you want to throw at it. And overall, it's a pretty fun and pretty wild blade to have in the collection. And of course, I do enjoy using it. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video on the 3DK AMOC, and uh, hopefully you guys checked out the 3DK MAK that I also have that now pretty much lives with my Desert Eagle. And uh, yeah, they make some pretty cool knives out of Anchorage, and I might be slightly biased because they are Alaskan knives, but they are really quality. And like I said, the coolest thing, and like I said in the, uh, 3DK MAK video. The coolest thing about uh, 3DK as a whole is that one, they're very responsive to their users and they can do end user customization to make the blades more personalized. So if you want, you know, like a, a portion of the blade to be sharpened for, or portion of the spine of the blade to be sharpened for striking ferro rods, they can do that. If you want custom, you know, texturing, they can do that. If you want Cerakotes, they can add those. You know, you can also straight from the get-go get a plethora of different handles and different steel options. So realistically, they have these knives set up, you know, whether you go with the AMUC or the 3DK, uh, you can go with a wide variety of different um, steels, handle options, coatings to fit your needs. So not trying to necessarily say you should go out and buy a 3DK knife, but that is one of the biggest advantages I see with my 3DKs. 
they have a very high degree of end user customization to personalize that knife and make it just right for your use case. So I find it really helpful and very useful. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing the AMUC in use. And as always, guys, God bless and I'm out.